This is the book of Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Udash, the to the apostles and elders of great millstone peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth in sincerity. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Udash, Brakdam, Tizukwanium, Wakim, Wakwaf, and the elders, your brothers, your sisters, the hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure. And of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His beloved Son, our Lord and our Savior, and our King, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, in these last days and these perilous times that we are living in. This is Brother Peshai, Ban Yashallah. And it's be a quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai on how, in the midst of troublesome times, a man of the Lord will be like unto an hiding place. Right, a man of Yahweh Bahashim Shai, the elect men will be like unto a hiding place. All right, so that's why it's important, you know, for you women out there, all right, you so called black women, you so called Hispanic women, you so called native, some of the Indian women, to understand and realize, you know, your role and your order, you know, um, within uh, in your purpose in these last days, which is what to be, uh, look at the definition of woman, all right, let's look at woman. Online etymology, right? The word woman, let's see, it literally means wife, all right? Like the wife of a man. Let's, let's look at the woman right here, right? So it says, um, is this what I want? No, no, no. Yeah, it means wife, literally, right? What's another meaning, right? Boom, found it. So woman, adult female, human, right? It says woman, female, servant. All right, a female servant. So that's what it means to be a woman. All right, and in the script, you go into the word man, it goes to servant as well. And the etymology was the servant of who? Yahweh Bashim al Shai. That's the whole duty of what? Of man. Look at that precept very quick. Because everything will be done decently in order. So let's get the precept in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse uh, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this, the whole duty of man, of mankind. Our duty is to fear the Most High, keep his commandments. So the same way we're submissive and servants. Most high God Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai, you women have to come back in order to be a female servant serving your man. Right? Like Sarah called what? Abraham Lord. Look at that, right? Uh, get that quick precept. Because this is important for salvation for you women out there. Alright, because this Westernized society has, you know, uh plagued the minds of you Israelite women. Alright? You think you don't need a man to get delivered in these last days, but that's not the case. Alright, first Peter 3 verse 6. Let's start at verse um, 5. After this man in the old time, the holy woman, all right, woman that was set apart, holy, also who trusted in the Mosai, right, adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. See that? So they were subject to their husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. You're the daughters of Sarah, right? Like I mentioned earlier, you, this, 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 uh, for the so called. Uh, black woman, so called Hispanic woman, so called natives and Indian woman, all right, the Israelite woman, all right, your daughters of Sarah, all right, so you should follow her example and remember these things, remember these precepts, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. So it goes to what in these last days, like I mentioned, um, the order, all right, like uh, the precepts are open, Acts 16, chapter verse 31, it says, What, uh, if you believe on your house, you and your household will be saved, man. All right, meaning what the man is ahead of the household and him, you know, serving how Bashim al Shai, you know, the protection given to him, you know, bestowed the power to uh, bestowed upon him that trickles on down. So, if a brother in these last days have, you know, wives, have children, and he believes in how Bashim al Shai and the most on down him spiritual power, that's for his protection and the protection of his family. All right, so remember these things for you women out there. Remember to stick close to your husband. If you don't have a husband, keep faith in how Bashim al Shai because. The precepts say this as well. Second Edges, the second chapter, in verse uh, twenty. Let's have verse twenty-seven. This whole chapter is good. Let's read this right fast. Second Edges two and verse twenty-seven. Be not weary, so don't be afraid, man. For when the day of trouble in heaven is cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. So when all hell break loose in society, the most I'm going to take care of is the elect, because the elect consists of men, women, and children. All right. Verse twenty-eight. The heathen shall envy thee. And the heathen going to other nations, but also um, Israelites, all right? That's in the heathen night 
heathenist, uh, heathenistic mentality. They're going to envy us. Low will we have that number of the elect. They're going to envy us. All right. Because, you know, we have that cover about us. Right. As we don't, it says that covering is the hedge, the, the protection by the Almighty. Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. As we don't. But they shall be able to do nothing against thee, save the Lord. My hands shall cover thee so that thy children shall not see hell. The hell is what? The grave. All right. Meaning what? Death. My hands shall cover thee so that thy children shall not see hell. Be joyful, thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, save the Lord. Right, read it one more time. Second verse 2 and verse 30. It says, Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, save the Lord. All right, why? Because he's merciful, man. You know, if we sit out there that may just be, you know, um, widows, you know, you'll be you be straight, man. If you have faith in Yahweh Shema Shah, he'll guide you to a man of the Lord. All right. But so you no, know, be joyful, because he will deliver us as, as those that trust in him, like the holy woman of ancient, of ancient of ancient times. Verse 31. Remember thy children that sleep, for I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth and show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, save the Lord Almighty, man. All right? So I want to get a few precepts to add balance as well, because you got to remember, let's get Isaiah 32. All right? Because in this society, Esau has given a woman power, so majority of women on this side, especially in America, are going to die. They're not going to make it. So those that believe in Yahweh by Shema Shah, if you want to make it, you have to follow these protocols. All right? Which is what? Coming in order. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Mashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. But I'll have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Hamashiach is Yahweh. That's the order. It's the Most High, all right? Yahweh, his son Yahweh Shai, man, then woman, all right? So that's the order. So we're coming back into that order. All right, us, you know, as Israelite men, you know, we was rebellious, we fell short, committed all type of iniquity, you know, um, spiritual um, adultery against our God, Yahweh Bashim al Shai. But now we come back into order and subjection to Yahweh Bashim al Shai, returning unto him in these last days. All right? So that's what the woman should be doing for your man. Going back to the mindset of your foremothers. All right? That was in that mindset of what? Serving uh, their husbands, no matter what. And I'm going to get, you know, this will be not too long. I want to do something quick, you know, to, to the point. All right. Uh, let's get Isaiah 32 now, right? Isaiah 32 and verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind in a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. All right, so a man should be as in hiding place from the wind. The wind is symbolized what? Destruction. All right, a covert from tempest and the rivers of water in a dry place. Imagine finding water in the midst of a desert. It's satisfying. So society collapse. Look at the priest from Second Edris. You got to, you women got to realize this. All right, that's how bad it's going to get in these last days. Look at Second Edris, the uh, 16th chapter in verse 33. It says, The virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms, the woman shall mourn having no husbands. See, when that when time come, you know, women are going to mourn because they don't have husbands. They don't have protection. They don't have a provider, a leader. All right. They can be out there left to, to, to die. That's how bad it's going to get very soon in this, in this society. You know, through cyber attacks, EMP attacks, terrorist attacks, whatever. However, Esau brings it. Oh, hell will break loose. It'll be famine, cannibalism. And they show you that in every post apocalyptic movie that the main targets be women and children. All right. It says, their daughter shall mourn, having no helpers. In the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine because their husbands are not of the elect. But if, you, if, you, if your man is serving Yahweh Bashim al Shai, right, he's going to be delivered pursuant to Isaiah 65, verse 13, how my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. All right, so the husbands that's of the elect will not perish in the midst of famine, but those that's not of the elect are going to die in the midst of famine. They're going to die by um, um, wars and riots, all right, and all this all type of chaos. So go back to, um, let's get Isaiah 32 and verse 9 now. All right. So you women out there better stick by your man's side, man. Him that's serving Yahweh Bashim al -Shai. And like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a husband, keep faith in Yahweh Bashim al -Shai. He'll guide you to one. All right. Isaiah 32 verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at, that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you, make you bare. Strip you and make you bare. And gird sackcloth upon your loins. You see? 
So get, get in order, man. Rise up. Repent. Because many days and years, for a long duration of time, we're going to be troubled, man. In the midst of Jacob's trouble. All right? So that's why we get Isaiah 4, verse 1. Right? When we read this, read it. Isaiah 4, verse 1. Right? And in, the, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only. Let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So that's why this prophecy is going to take place with women's mindset are going to change when society collapse. They're not going to go, they're going to go, they're going to go from the independent, independent spirit to I need a man spirit. All right. And not just any man. Look at Isaiah 13 and verse 12. The elect men. Isaiah 13 and 12, it says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than a golden wedge of Ophir. All right. So that Israelite man will be more precious than anything you ever could imagine. Let's get a precept. In the book of Genesis, look at Genesis 7 and 13 right quick. Just reading this quick precept. Now, quick backstory. The most I destroyed the world by way of flood, man. Everyone died. Everyone, he drowned everybody, man. Except for Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Now, the reason I'm getting this precept is because what? You have to understand how happy, all right, Noah's wife was. How happy the wife of Shem was. How happy the wife of Ham was. How happy the wife of Japheth was, man. They was happy to be under the, the protection and, 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 and uh, provision of these men. All right. Every other woman died, man. They, they, they drowned. But they but these women didn't. They was what? Preserved. Genesis 7 to 13. In the selfsame day into Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. See that? So they, they, they lived, man. All right. They lived. Everyone else died. Let's read verse 15. And they went in, no, yeah, 15. And they went in unto Noah into the ark. Two and two of all flesh wherein is, wherein is the birth of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as the Most High commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. The Most High shut the ark. So no one else could make it in. And when the days of Noah all over again, as in the days of Noah, so shall also be the days of the Son of Man. So it was about to get bad, man. So stick by your man's side. That's the point of this lesson, man. Because Let's get Ezekiel the uh, ninth chapter. Ezekiel nine verse four. And the Lord Yahweh Bashmal Shah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and said a mark. The word there for mark in the Hebrew is Dawa, which means to be exempt from judgment upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination be done in the midst of Who's that men? That's the elect men. All right. And in context, we're talking about back then, of course, but yes, even more now so today. All right, the, the elect have that seal, that mark to be exempt from judgment because they sign, they cry for all the abominations happening in, in America, Babylon, Great, and throughout the world. And we're praying and crying for the kingdom, for righteousness to reign upon the earth. You see? So if that man has that mark, his household will be uh, under that same protection. All right? Those that didn't have the mark, let's read the verse 5. And to the others, she said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Say utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin in my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men, which were before the house, man. So if your man has that mark to be exempt from judgment, you'll be protected if you stick by his side. Now, let's get a precept in the book of um, uh, Luke. Let me see. Luke 16 and verse 14. Luke 16 and verse 14. Right, chapter 17, verse 32. It says, What remember Lot's wife? All right, remember Lot's wife. Why? Because she didn't make it. See that? So, matter of fact, another quick precept on Lot's wife for you women out there, you don't want to be like this. All right, she was a monument. Let's look at that precept in Wisdom Solomon 10, chapter Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10. In verse uh, 6, when the ungodly perish, she delivered the righteous man to go into wisdom, all right, uh, who fled, all right, and that righteous man was Lot, right, that she is wisdom. It says, who fled from the fire which fell down upon the five cities, all right, the Canaanite wicked cities, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah being the most, you know, known and, and uh, famous cities amongst the five. It says, of whose wickedness, even to this day, the, the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never came to ripeness and the standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul so she's a monument of an unbelieving soul so that's what our lord yahweh shot literally just said in luke uh slot here in luke the 17 chapter to remember lot's wife man all right why because she did not make it man she looked back 
Don't look back. To hell with America. To hell with this world, man. Stick by your man's side. All right? Let's get another one. And this will be it. I'm going to end it up with this. First Timothy 2 and 15, it says, um, uh, yeah. First Timothy 2 and 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved and childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, man. So, woman, you could be saved by bearing the children of the men of the Lord. All right? In that time. I mean, what? You're going to want that man to plant a seed within you. So you could be joined unto him, right? Mainly, ultimately, he don't got to plant the seed. But I'm seeing as an example, like, once a man laid down with a woman, that's his wife, all right? If she don't belong to another man, all right? So when society collapse, a lot of you women going to be out there, you know, looking for a man of the Lord. And when you find him, you're going to lay with you so you could be his wife, all right? Now, if he plant a seed, he plant a seed. If he don't, he don't. But at the end of the day, if you stick by his side and faith and charity and sobriety, uh, sobriety and holiness, you're going to make it. You're going to be saved, all right? Because that man got, got that hedge. So him and his household will be delivered in these last days, man. So don't forget this. This is a quick lesson, you know, for the woman out there. Don't forget to stick by, you know, your man's side. Him that's serving you by Shemal Shah. All right. And if you don't have a husband, be patient and wait on your by Shemal Shah. Because he will guide us to one in these last days, man. There will be no independent woman on the chariots. All right. Nah, that's out of order. All right. Things will be done decently and in order. All right. So remember the holy woman of ancient times, man, that had faith in Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, man. All right, your husband is your Lord. All right, and sit by his side. So when society collapsed and he got the hedge about him, you know, you're going to have the hedge about you as well. And your children. Why? Because you're under that man's protection, which he's under Yahweh by Shemel Shai's protection. Everything done in order. So with that, let's give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechach, Kudash, the bondage of the apostles. And elders of great millstone, peace and salutation. Let's got it abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity.